Spring is finally here, and your next fishing trip could be the most exciting of the entire year, not only in numbers of bass, but opportunities at some of the biggest bass out there. So you can update your profile pics on Instagram, Facebook, and have bragging rights over your buddies for the rest of the season. I don't care if you're fishing from a boat, a kayak, or you're hoofing it old school along the shore, if you understand what these fish are up to this time of the year, you can maximize your time in high percentage areas with the right lures. So I put together five, five general keys to fish the spring to help you maximize your time out on the water and get you one step closer to catching your personal best. Number one, three phases. Spring can be broken up into pre-spawn, spawn, and post-spawn. As the weather gets better and we come out of winter time, those water temps are going to get up to about the high 40s, mid 50s, and these bass are going to go into their pre-spawn mode. They're going to leave their cold water hangouts and start moving towards the shallower areas where they're eventually going to spawn. In between these two spots is where they start feeding up heavily. This can be some of the best bass fishing of the entire year because these bass need to fatten up in a hurry before they move up shallow to spawn. Now as water temps hit between 55 and about 70 degrees, the male bass will move up into the spawning areas and start building the nests and then the females will follow shortly after to lay the eggs. Now bass during this time are not really keyed into feeding. That's why they fed up so much in the pre-spawn, but they are extremely aggressive and extremely territorial this year, so they'll still strike lures, and this can make for some really exciting shallow water fishing. Post-spawn. Once water temps hit about 70 degrees and above, the majority of bass are finishing up spawning and heading out to deeper, cooler summertime hangouts. This starts with the female bass. Shortly after they lay their eggs, they begin to head out to deeper water to recover, leaving the males still up shallow to guard the eggs, and then once they hatch, the fry for another week or so, and then they'll head out to deeper water as well. Now these fish get totally beat up and fatigued during the spawn, so they don't feed nearly as aggressively as they did when they, uh, during the pre-spawn. However, they still do feed very heavily but it's just in shorter, concise bite windows. So understanding those different windows, you can really maximize your catches this time. All right guys, pre-spawn, spawn, post-spawn. Post Sounds pretty simple, right? Now let's mix things up with some little grayish details. All the bass do not go through all these phases at the same time. For example, on any given body of water, one end of the lake, the fish can be up shallow in their full spawn mode, where the other end of the lake, the fish can be just starting to go into their pre-spawn feeding mode. It depends on the varying conditions throughout the lake that dictate what phase these fish are going to be in. Lastly, not all the fish in a given area are going to move up all at once. They tend to do so in waves during ideal conditions over the course of months. Understanding the three phases of spring will not only help you locate the fish, but it'll aid in helping you select the right lures that are going to get those bass to strike. Number two, location. Okay, so we've already established as the water warms up, the bass begin their migrations to spawn. Having success this time of the year is all about identifying key stops along this journey where you can intercept the fish as they feed up for the spawn. The best way of doing this is by first identifying where these fish are gonna end up to spawn. Then back up and figure out where they're gonna be coming from out of their cold wintertime hangouts. Once you have the beginning and the end of their journey, you can better identify key areas along that route that those fish are gonna be using. Now let's talk real quick about what these fish need to spawn. They need hard bottom that's protected from the elements like wind and current, and then they need exposure to plenty of sunlight to incubate those eggs. These areas tend to be in shallower water, but can vary depending on the body of water and also the species of bass. So now let's take a look at an easy example of a spawning migration in a creek arm. The small coves and cuts in the back of the creek are shallow, therefore warmer, and are protected from the wind and other elements. So these would be ideal areas for bass to eventually spawn. Now in the winter, the bigger concentrations of the bass were oriented more towards the main lake on big points or steep bluffs that offered deep water access. We now have our two points and can begin identifying possible hot spots for these bass as they move into the creek arm. Now at this point, you wanna just focus on that fishy looking structure and cover as you work your way back into the arm. This can be secondary points, island humps, lay down trees, and bends in the creek channel. 
Fish will group up in key areas and feed like crazy, making it a great time to catch a lot of bass. This is that pre-spawn period that these fish are near their spawning areas, but they're fattening up, waiting for those perfect conditions to move up and spawn. As these fish gorge themselves, eventually the mood will be right and a wave of bass will move up to spawn. Once they're done, they'll actually move back out and disperse among a lot of those areas that they use during the pre-spawn, as well as out in the main lake where they're gonna recover and chillax for the rest of the summer. Number three, environmental variables. We've now discussed that warming waters push these fish along their migrational routes towards their spawning areas. But now let's take a look at some other variables. Water clarity is a big deal. Bass need the sunlight to incubate their eggs. Stained water prevents deeper light penetration, so the bass will tend to spawn shallower in these conditions. Basically, in dirtier water, fish are gonna spawn shallower, and conversely, in cleaner water, bass are gonna spawn deeper. Another point with sunlight to take note of is which banks on a body of water are getting more of it. Northern and western banks tend to have sun shining on them longer this time of the year, warming them up faster, causing the bass to go into their spawning mode earlier than other places throughout the lake. Another factor is the wind. Bass will avoid spawning on banks that are continuously getting blown out. These banks get stirred up, making the water dingier and darker, preventing the light rays from coming in and incubating the eggs, but also all that turned up soot can actually settle back down and cover up the eggs, potentially killing them altogether. So calm, sunny, clear water areas are ideal. Now that being said, during the pre-spawn and post-spawn time, wind can be your friend. During these times, the bass use it to their advantage to ambush their prey, making them a lot more likely to hit lures on these windy days or even low light conditions like just a cloudy day. Number four, not all bass are equal. The three most common types of black bass are largemouth, smallmouth, and spotted bass. And each one of the species has their own unique personality traits. All three species go through the spawning cycle during the spring, but have some small little differences. Largemouth bass love to spawn shallow, which is usually in about one to four feet of water when the water temps reach about 60 to 70 degrees. They like a nice hard bottom that they'll fan and clean out all the dirt and soot on it, exposing that hard bottom, whether it's rock, gravel, or some kind of shells. And then they usually like to be uh, in a clearing where maybe there's some grass around them or next to a stump or along a lay down tree. Now, smallmouth bass are a little bit different. They tend to like clear, deeper water. So when water temps hit about the low 60s, those fish are gonna move into about that three to 15 foot range around gravel flats, uh, island humps, or current breaks in rivers. Now the depth is gonna depend on the sunlight penetration, which is huge. Those eggs need a lot of sunlight to be able to incubate and hatch. So if you've got very clear water, that sunlight is gonna penetrate well through the water and those bass are gonna feel comfortable spawning deeper more towards that 15 foot mark. However, if you have dingy, uh, not so clear water, you're gonna prevent much sunlight getting through, those fish are gonna move up significantly shallower. Now spotted bass are a hardy little fish and they don't mind the cold at all. If the water temps get in the mid to high 50s and the conditions are right, they'll move into those similar areas the smallies are gonna use to go spawn. That's long gradual sloping points, island tops, uh, anywhere with some deeper water nearby, they can move right up, build their nests, spawn, and move right back out. The point is, don't typecast bass. The three species are all gonna go through the spawning cycle during the spring, but there's little subtle differences between the species and even the, the conditions of the lake can put on the bass to make them act differently. So you wanna make sure that even though you understand the general things that bass are gonna do in an area, you need to figure out the little characteristics of the species and how they act in your local water. Number five, lures. Bass become extremely aggressive during the spring and are willing to strike a wide range of lures. Now there's some staples that tend to work year after year during the spring, no matter where you are in the country. Now, whenever I head out under the water, I wanna make sure I have baits that'll cover all the water columns, top, mid, and bottom, and then the different situations like structure and cover that I'm gonna run into so I'm prepared for anything throughout the day. 
For the pre-spawn and post-spawn, a jerk bait can be an excellent way to quickly cover those transition areas and locate the productive ones. The erratic motion of this bait gets the fish's attention and then the pause is what triggers the strikes. The clearer the water, the better this bait works. Now during the post-spawn, these fish are sometimes a little slower to react, so giving it a little bit longer pause between the jerks can get these fish moving again. During all three phases of the spring, especially when it's calm, a jig can be fantastic. Whether you're up shallow flipping lay down trees or different brush, or you're firing out a football head and slow rolling it over gravel humps or different transition areas, it can get the fish chewing. Starting with natural colors like green, pumpkin, or brown can be a good starting point until you dial in the right colors. Everyone loves top water, and buzz baits this time of the year can produce amazing results in low light conditions, especially in the morning, where you go to the back of these coves, where this time during the spring, the shad are up there spawning and those bass are looking to feed on them. Poppers and frogs are a couple other top water baits that do really well this time of the year. The poppers imitate the little panfish that are up shallow that threaten to eat the eggs and the fry of the bass, and they can elicit some big strikes from those territorial bass. Then frogs are weedless, so they can be really effective at fishing shallow water that has a lot of debris and snags, so you can find these little pockets these bass are hanging out in. Obviously, don't ever count out plastics. We know these fish are gonna be in these pre-spawn transition areas, and then they're gonna move up into these ideal spawning areas, but when they're not always biting, hitting those moving baits, slowing down to something a little bit more finesse can be ideal. Like a weightless worm that vertically falls along structure, or you're dragging a Carolina rig over some of these transition areas, or hopping a uh, tube down a bank can be great ways of getting these fish that aren't hitting those other baits. And lastly, pretty much any time during the spring, if you have wind, End, a spinnerbait can be a great lure to use. It's easy to throw and you can target fish at all the different water depths just by changing your speed of retrieve and it gets bit. Now a big point I want to make when choosing lures this time of the year is to first look at the body of water and figure out where those fish are or where you think they should be and then you can figure out what lures you need to actually effectively fish that water. Oftentimes, it's more about just getting a lure in front of the fish this time of the year than finding that magic lure. Guys, fishing in the spring can be a blast no matter what skill level you're at, and there's always room for improvement. By better understanding the phases these bass go through and their habits, you'll be able to better pattern the fish in your local area. Keep in mind that no two lakes are the same, but knowing during the spring that the bass are gonna feed up somewhere and then move shallow to spawn will help you stay around the fish and also help you select the right lures to target them effectively. At the very least, I hope this video gives you a little something more to think about this spring and even maybe, just maybe, it connects you with some more fish. I'm Travis Moran with Bass Tackle X, where we teach the basics of bass fishing. If you like this video and want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little bell, that notification button, so that you get a notification every time we throw out some new videos. I really appreciate it, and the more subscribers I see, the more motivated I'll be to make more videos for you guys. So until next time, I'll catch you out in the water.